Today we're going to be taking a look at the different kinds of dead front bushings available on the market. There's five commonly used designs, and it's good to have some familiarity with them, especially if you're installing transformers on a regular basis. Now there's two amperage ratings that these bushings could come in, either 200 amp or 600 amp. We'll start by looking at 200 amp bushings. These are separated by voltage class and color coded. And first up, you have your 15 kV class bushing. Now these are color coded red, okay? The tip of the bushing is red, so you can recognize it as 15 kV. And I should say, this is just a dust cap, okay? This is just to keep the dust off the bushing while it's in storage. It has no electrical insulating properties. Okay, so this 15 kV bushing is actually a two-piece assembly. And that means that it has a bushing well. This is the actual interface to the transformer tank. And the bushing insert plugs in and screws into that well, okay? So that's what makes it a two-piece assembly. The next voltage class is 25 kV, color-coded blue. Again, it's a two-piece assembly, just like 15 kV. Next up, we have your 35 kV bushing. And at this size, it becomes a one-piece assembly and it's color-coded purple. Now this design is called a Cooper Purple Cuff Bushing, sometimes referred to as a large interface bushing, and that's because they used to make a small interface 35 kV well and insert two-piece assembly design. Uh, that's not as common, I think they still make it, but you don't see it very often. Next up is the 600 amp category. There's only two classes in the 600 volt category, uh, 600 amp category rather. Uh, you've got your 15 slash 25 kV, that's good for 15 or 25 kV voltages. And it's a one piece assembly. And once you get up to 600 amps, your bushings become dead break as opposed to load break. Well, what does that mean? Well, I'll show you. So at 200 amps, your transformer elbow, your cable's terminated to your elbow, uh, which has a probe in it. And that plugs directly on to your bushing like this. Just slips right in, okay? Now you can actually break this load, and sometimes utilities do. They'll get a hot stick, uh, they'll put it right here in the back end, and they will literally break the load on that transformer just like that. You don't have to de-energize the transformer uh, to take the bushings out, okay? So that's why it's called load break. Now, dead break bushings, on the other hand, they have a stud in the end. And the elbow that plugs into this which at 600 amp is actually a, uh, it's called a T-body connector. It has a bolt on the end. So you plug in your elbow and then you screw that bolt into the end of the, uh, into the end of the T-body. And then that's a solid connection. You can't pull it off to break the load. So that's why it's called dead break. Okay, so you've got your 25 slash 15 kV dead break bushing. And then you've got your 15, uh, excuse me, your 35 kV dead break bushing. Now, these are not color coded once you get up to 600 amp, um, but you can tell the difference because it's a little bit bigger, right? Higher voltage, so it requires a little bit more insulation. That's the only way to tell the difference between these two. The number one mistake I see people making when sizing the bushings of their transformer is they get 200 amp when they actually need 600 amp. And they'll say, well, you know, the transformer is only gonna see 60 amps at the primary, so why do I need a 600 amp? Uh, well, that's all good and well, unless you have a loop feed application and you've got multiple transformers in the loop. I'll show you. So let's just say transformer A, you've done the calculation and it's good for 60 amps on the primary bushings. All it's gonna see is 60 amps. Well, that's great, but you have to keep in mind that the bushings on the first transformer in the loop have to support the amperage of all the transformers downstream of it. In this example, there's four. So if each of these are worth 60 amps at the primary, the first transformer at least is gonna have to have 600 amp dead brakes because that's 240 amps. It's above the 200 amp load brake bushing design. 